and did not let my enemies gloat over me. Lord my God, I called to you for help and you healed me. Lord, you brought me up from the realm of the dead. You sp spared me from going down to the pit. And um, Sing the praises of the Lord, uh, you his faithful people. Praise his holy name. For he, for his anger lasts only for a moment, but his favor lasts for a lifetime. Weeping may remain for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. When I felt secure, I said, I will never be shaken. Lord, when you favored me, um, you made my royal mountain stand firm. But when you hid your face, I was dismayed. To you, Lord, I call. To the Lord, I cried for mercy. Uh, what is gained if I am silenced, if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it proclaim your faithfulness? Hear the Lord, hear Lord, and be mer merciful to me. Lord, be my help. You turn my wailing into dancing, my mourning into dancing, amen. You removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy that my heart may sing your praise and not be silent. Lord my God, I will praise you forever. Wow, another great, great blessed psalm again to get into and let's just break that down because this psalm is so real for where we're at at the moment as a nation and as the nations and as churches and as leaders let's just look at that it says you in verse one it says i will exalt you lord for you filled lifted me out of the depths and did not let my enemies gloat over me lord my god i called to you for help and you healed me how many of us tonight can say that god saved us god pulled us out the miry clay how many of us tonight can actually say you know what if it wasn't for god i wouldn't be where i am now if jesus hadn't reached down if he hadn't saved me if he hadn't pulled me out set me free then i'd still be in the ditch are you able to say with confidence tonight it says i will exalt you lord for you lifted me out of the depths and did not let my enemies gloat over me lord my god i called to you for help and you healed me how many of us tonight have been healed by god how many of us tonight have been set free by him how many i know i have i know he saved me and he rescued me amen did he rescue you can you put your hands up in the air and say, I have been rescued by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. Are you confident in your heart of what God's done? Because David can say with confidence here that he's been rescued. He's been saved. Lord, I will exalt you. Why will I praise you? Why will I exalt you? I will exalt you, Lord, because you lifted me out of the depths. He's a faithful God tonight. He's a faithful God tonight. Remember this church. If you turn off now, if, if you can only come for five minutes tonight, remember this before you go. He is faithful. He's a faithful God. He's an incredible God. He's an awesome God. Can I get an amen? Can I get an amen? Let's just press that like button. Let's just cheer. Let's do a virtual shout of praise, right? Because God's worthy. And so let's exalt him tonight. Let's go, come on. You are awesome, God. Let's shout hallelujah by pressing the like button. Let's declare the goodness of God. Let's sing praises to his holy name. Hallelujah. I will exalt you, Lord. You lifted me up out of the depths. You did not let my enemies gloat over me. Lord my God, I called to you for help and you healed me. If you need healing tonight, if you need God to come into your life tonight, then God can reach right into your lounge, in your living room, in your bedroom, wherever you're watching this tonight. He can reach in your dining room. He can reach into your heart and he can heal you. Now, when I talk about healing, I'm not just talking about physical healing. He can heal you in your mind. He can heal you in your loneliness. He can just put his arms of love and grace around you right now. And my God has the power to touch you, heal you, rescue you, man alive. He's an awesome God and he's a mighty God. And God is able to do miracles tonight. 
miracles. He's wanting to touch you, rescue you, and redeem you. If you're watching tonight and you don't know Jesus, and you've not got a relationship with God, then let me tell you the good news. Here's the good news, that tonight you can come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. You can come to know him as King, King Jesus. Amen. You'd be able to say like David, I exalt you, Lord, for you have lifted me out of the depths. You did not let the enemies gloat over me. Lord God, I called to you for help and you healed me. Tracy says, absolutely. Uh, William uh, says, what does he say? That is exactly where we all need now. Amen. Jenny, thanks for the healing you've done in my life. Suku, um, Saku, heal us, Lord. Wayne has put, thank you, Jesus, for being faithful uh, when I was a prodigal, right? And he rescued him. Tracy's put uh, crowns, glory. Betty and Gordon, amen, Lord, you are faithful, God. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Good news tonight. Good news tonight. Let's continue to read in verse 3. It says, You, Lord, brought me up from the realm of the dead. You spared me from going down to the pit. Sing the praises of the Lord, his faithful people. Let's stop there a moment. I, I just want to... Uh, I know we don't have long tonight, and, and we're, we're just... We're not having an in-depth Bible study, but I think it's really important that we, we bring out a couple of points here. The scholars believe that when David wrote this part, David was struggling with depression. There was a, there was a, emotionally, David was feeling pressured. We've been reading all the way up, uh, all these these uh, 30 chapters of Psalms, we saw that David had a lot of pressure, had a lot of enemies, a lot of people were coming against him because he stood for the Lord God Almighty. But it says this, it says, You, Lord, brought me up from the realm of the dead. You spared me from going down to the pit. Now, David wasn't physically dying. David didn't have a physical injury here. But what David did have, he had an overwhelming, overwhelming sense of pressure and fear and just God. And I don't know where you're at tonight, but I want to let you know that if you have a sense of sadness in your heart, if you have a sense of depression, if you're God, where are you now? Right? If you're in that pit of, of hopelessness, then God can reach in like he did to David. And God can bring you up from the realm of the dead, from the realm of depression, from the realm of insecurity, from the realm of fear. You spared me from going down to the pit. David say, before it was too late, when I was in depression, and before I just went into that pit, you reached in and you rescued me. Let me tell you, God will always, always reach in and rescue you. Can I get an amen? God will always reach in and rescue you. That's the heart of God tonight. That's the heart of God tonight. He will always reach in and rescue. We thank God. We praise God. He's an awesome God. And He will reach in. And he will rescue you tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Then it says in verse 4, and guys, if you're taking down notes tonight, just separate these, you know, verse 1 and verse 2, and then separate verse 3, and then separate to verse 4. And if you're okay with underlining or marking your Bible, then please do so. Let me just move across to there. In verse 4, it says, Sing the praises of the Lord, you, his faithful people. Praise his holy name. Sing the praises of the Lord, you, his faithful people. If you are faithful to God tonight, 
and you want to sing God's praises, why don't you just like that button now? Let's get as many people involved as possible, right? Because this scripture here, David's talking to you. It says, sing the praises of the Lord, you, his faithful people. You who've met every night for 30 nights. You who've met every night for 20 nights. You who've, who've prayed every day for the, this nation and the nations. You're his faithful people. And David says, sing praise. Sing the praises of the Lord. You, his faithful people, praise his holy name. If you're faithful tonight, if you're saved tonight, if you class yourself as a son or daughter of God tonight, he's saying, sing praises. Worship his holy name. Shout how good he is and how awesome he is. Declare the favor of God. Declare the awesomeness of God. Declare it tonight, he's saying. Proclaim and sing a song of praise. Amen. Whatever your song might be, sing a song of praise. Pippus put, this week, he has rescued me as depression started to creep in. But my God set me free. Listen to that, church. If you're tuning in for the first time tonight, there's a lady called Pippa that's saying tonight, this week, God rescued her. She was starting to get the emotions of depression and starting to feel depressed. But God rescued her. And she put there, depression started to creep in. And that's exactly what depression does. It just comes in very slowly. It doesn't come through the front door. It comes through the back door. And she's saying, depression started to creep in. Right? She said, but my God set me free. But my God. And no matter what you're going through, if you give God space, no matter what situation you're going through, there's always a but. And if you allow that but to be God moving in, he will set you free. So Pippa, I want to just thank you for sharing that. Hallelujah. If anyone else is dealing with those emotions of depression, you've heard it here. Not just me say it, but this week, God has set somebody free from depression. That's how awesome God is. That's how mighty God is. And we thank him and we praise him. Hallelujah. So sing praises. Pippa, that's what she's doing. She's singing praises because she knows that she's been saved. God's transformed her this week. God saved her this week. So she's able to sing praises. So let us be people of praise. Let us be people of worship. Excuse me. It says, For his anger only lasts for a moment in verse 5. But his favor lasts for a lifetime. We must understand that uh, we serve a righteous God. We serve a God that loves us, but we serve a God of truth. God can get angry, but his anger is only for a moment, only for a minute only for a very short amount compared to God's favor. And it says uh, his favor lasts for a lifetime. The anger of God was put upon Jesus. Uh, God is angry at sin. God is angry at sin. God's not angry at you, but he's angry at sin because sin will separate you from him. So anything that separates you from him, God gets angry about. Anything that jeopardizes your relationship with him, God gets angry about. Anything that causes you to suffer, so it might be sickness, it might be poverty, it, it might be um, arrogance, stubbornness, anything that causes a detrimental effect upon you and upon your relationship with him, God is angry about. But his love conquers and his love wins and when you surrender to God the love of God empowers you and empowers me to be set free in the mighty name of Jesus hallelujah hallelujah Gemma's put I have been through the valleys 
and clung to God. Things I look back now at and know and wonder how I got through them. And there is only one answer, Jesus. Wonderful and amazing God. Hallelujah. Karen said she knows what it's like. She's been there. She said it was a very dark place. It was like falling down a hole because when depression can come in, amen, let me tell you that depression is a weapon of the enemy. Depression is a weapon of the enemy. You see, when you're depressed, your eyes get taken off God. They get taken off future and they get put onto hopelessness and why bother and what's going to be different and what's going to change let me tell you the devil would use depression to slow you down and to stop you from doing anything positive or good in your life understand that depression will make you feel like you're the only person going through this difficulty depression will cause you to think there's no way out let me tell you there is a way out and his name is Jesus hallelujah Jesus King of Kings and Lord of Lords hallelujah don't we thank God and we praise God praise God amen okay let's have a look at what else we got on here it says this weeping may remain for a night in verse 5 <laughs> but joy rejoicing gladness comes in the morning weeping may remain for a night but in the morning rejoicing comes gladness comes in the mighty name of Jesus hallelujah hallelujah amen in the mighty name of Jesus praise God Verse 6 says this. When I felt secure, I said, I will never be shaken. Lord, when you favored me, you made my royal mountain stand firm. But when you hid your face, I was dismayed. To you, Lord, I called. To the Lord, I cried for mercy. What is gained if I am silenced? If I go down to the pit, will the dust praise you? Will it proclaim your faithfulness? Hear, Lord, and be merciful to me. Lord, be my help. These are the words that David uses here because he's in a state of depression. He can't see God doing what God is doing. And let me tell you this, that when we're in depression, God doesn't go away. God doesn't change. God doesn't say anything different. But emotionally, we feel like God's walked away. But the Bible says, it never leave you nor forsake you. But emotionally, we feel like God isn't able to do anything. But yet the word of God says that his ear is not deaf and his arm is not short. He has the power. We feel that God's not listening. But yet he's only a prayer away. But our state of mind, our state of emotion, if we allow it to control us, it will cause us to change the way that God looks. And yet God hasn't changed. He's the same yesterday, today and forever. And David is given here what he felt his words were when he was in depression. He says, but why did you hide your face? I was dismayed. Why did you hide? God didn't hide his face from David. But his emotional state was telling him that God's hid his face. Then it says, To you, Lord, I called. To you, Lord, I cry for mercy. Uh, what is gained if I am silenced? He says, If I go down to the pit... Would the dust praise you? He's saying, God, but but I spoke and, and you didn't an answer and 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 
nothing was changing and I was going down into a pit and, and I don't understand what's going on, what's happening God and that's exactly what it feels like when you're going into depression this is what David experienced but he then says this and he starts talking to himself talking to himself he says if I go if I go down to the pit question mark will the dust praise you question mark will it proclaim your faithfulness question mark here Lord and be merciful to me Lord be my help and he's starting to realize that oh, I hold on a minute maybe the way that I'm feeling maybe the way that feels true and that feels real isn't actually real maybe just maybe God is doing something in my life that I can't see and I can't experience but I choose to trust that God is doing miracles when your life seems to have no legs so to speak and there's no movements and you're just in a an emotional lockdown or a spiritual lockdown there doesn't seem to be any difference from day to day we're sort of living groundhog day if you've seen that movie uh, the Monday is the same as a Tuesday, the same as a Saturday, same as a Sunday. So there's that sort of Groundhog Day. Nothing seems to be changing. We're in lockdown. Today was the same as yesterday, same as the day before, same as last week, same as the week before. And we've got a, a few more weeks left. But I want to assure you that even when you don't see God moving, He's a miracle working God. Hallelujah. Even when you don't see him, he's working behind the scenes. So David then starts to say to himself, well, you know what? Maybe I need to be talking to myself and declaring to myself some truths. Maybe I need to remind myself of who I am. I'm feeling lost, I'm feeling lonely, I'm feeling separated, I'm feeling sad, I'm feeling depressed, I'm feeling hopeless, I'm feeling weak, I, I, I feel pointless, I don't understand what's happening, but maybe I need to remind myself that I'm actually a son of God, or a daughter of God, or a child of God, that he has a plan for me, that he has a promise for me, and he has a plan for you and he has a promise for you so he starts to say well hold on a minute if I stay in this depression it says what's gained if I'm silent if I stay depressed what good is going to come out of that what's the profit what's the benefit what's the blessing and when you're in depression you never ask yourself these questions you just think about where you are and what you're going through but David starts to say hold on a minute if I stay here in this pit of depression if I stay here sad and lonely and feeling insecure really what is going to be gained from that am I going to gain anything is my family going to gain anything are my neighbors going to gain anything is God going to gain anything no they're not going to gain anything if I stay here it's pointless if I stay in depression. So he starts to say, well, well, hold on a minute. What is gained if I'm silenced? If I go down to the pit, will the dust praise you? If I go into depression, if I go into isolation, if I close my door and say, right, you know, there's so many people, guys, that were in lockdown before even lockdown was invented. So many people would, 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 would live in their own little world of depression. They wouldn't socialize with anyone. They would, wouldn't go to church or if they came to church, it'd be once every other week. They, they wouldn't fellowship with anyone. They would live like a hermit. There were so many people living in lockdown before lockdown was even invented. And why were they living in lockdown? Because the government had not invented lockdown. 
but the devil had invented lockdown. So the devil would lock down men and women of God, good men and good women, and say, you know what? If you stay at home, if you don't interact, if you don't fellowship, it's a safer place to be. You won't get hurt. You won't be asked to do stuff. People won't depend on you. You won't let people down. People won't let you down. So therefore, it's a good place to be. And so people would stay in the house. Many people, non-Christians and Christians, they go to work, they come back, they put the pajamas on, they go to bed. They go to work the next day, come back, put the pajamas on, go to bed. Why? Because they felt safe, created, and creating their own version of lockdown. Now, they never knew it was lockdown. Uh, we never knew what lockdown was. But now we start to realize maybe I was living in a lockdown. I was living like a hermit. I created my own lockdown because I felt like I was in control. Because if I didn't let anybody in, then people wouldn't hurt me. But in your depression, in your time of lockdown, you need to ask yourself the same questions that David asked of himself. And he said, what is it gained if I stay locked away socially, emotionally, spiritually? What is it gained? If I go down in depression, how is that going to help me? How is that going to help you? How is that going to advance the kingdom of God? He says, would the dust praise you? <laughs> would it proclaim your faithfulness? Hear, Lord, and be merciful to me, Lord. Be my help. Even in a difficult time that David was going through, David still had a heart for God. And even though he was feeling very low and focused on himself, David had such a thread, a foundation of the reason he existed is to worship God. The reason why he lived was to give God the praise. He had that ingrained into him that after he fought as much as he called about himself, he said, but what about you, God? What about you? Amen. What about you, Lord? How is this going to benefit you? And when you're in depression, you don't think about anybody else but you. Not in a selfish way, right? But just in, you just feel that you can't. And if you can't think about anyone else, if you can't think about God in your depression, you'll never get out. Remember, when you're in your depression, the devil will want, want you to think about nobody else but you. To get out of depression, you need to start thinking about how faithful God has been to you. The reason why you're born is to worship God and to praise Him. And if you don't praise Him, if you don't worship Him, who's going to worship in your place? Creation can worship. The rocks can worship, but they shouldn't take your place. You were created to be a worshipping being, a human being, to worship God. So David has a word of himself. And then he says, well, hold on a minute. You turned my mourning into dancing. You removed my sackcloth and ashes, in verse 11. You clothed me with joy that my heart may sing and praises and not be silent. Lord my God, I will praise you forevermore. You turned my mourning into dancing. You removed my depression and you clothed me with joy. Why? That I may sing of your praises and not be silent. Tonight, it's time for you to break out of your silence. Tonight, it's time for you to shout. Tonight, depression has kept you on the back seat. And now God is saying, come forward, my daughter, my son, step forward, my child. Depression has kept you silent and convinced you that's your character type. No, 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 no. Right? Well, I'm not an extrovert, I'm an introvert and blah, blah, blah. No, no, no. That's a lie. You were created to worship. You were created to praise. Life and situations has made you quiet. Hard things that have happened in your life has made you quiet. Listen, daughter, 
child, son of God, it's time to shout. It's time to shout. I declare it right now over your household. I declare it right now over your life. It's time to shout. Time to shout praise in your house. Time to shout praise where you're at. It's time to lift your voice. It's time to declare that God is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. It is time to shout praise. Hallelujah. It's time to shout glory. You turn my mourning into dancing. You remove my depression and you clothe me with joy. Joy is going to clothe you tonight. God is going to take away depression tonight. God is going to set you free tonight just like he set Pippa free this week. God is going to set you free. He's going to remove depression and he's going to replace it with joy. The joy of the Lord will become your strength. The joy of the Lord will become your strength. Can I get an amen? God is going to put joy in you. He's going to bless you and he's going to honor you in the mighty and wonderful name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Just declare that right now. Just receive it right now. Just receive that joy. Amen. Let me disappear for a second. Let allow this worship music just to minister to you. And just declare on here. Just say, I receive that joy right now in the name of Jesus. Just put that on there. Right? Just declare that on there. And just for the next 30 seconds, I'm going to disappear. And you just, just, just say, I receive that. Depression go in the name of Jesus. Depression go in the name of Jesus. Depression go. And I receive right now the joy of the Lord. Just tell yourself, I receive it. I receive it. I raise my hands right now and I receive the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I'm going to disappear for 30 seconds. That's why we praise him. Amen. Christ alone, cornerstone. Adam's put, I receive it. Joy's put, I receive it. Victor's put, God is good to us. In Christ alone, the song that's playing at the moment, cornerstone. Hallelujah. Yes, just giving the invitation tonight for those who don't know Jesus. You would like to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. Well, we can pray tonight. We can invite God to come into your life. You can know the joy of the Lord. You can know the peace of God. And you can start a personal relationship with Jesus. Let's just pray and invite God right now. If you would like to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then just please... Bow your head, close your eyes, and repeat this prayer after me. Dear God, I thank you for sending your son Jesus to this earth. Jesus, I thank you that you came and you died for me. You gave your life for me. You shed your blood for me. That I might come to know you as Lord and Savior. I recognize that you died for my sin, my wrongdoing, my stubbornness and arrogance. Today, I choose to give my life to you. I choose to live for you. I apologize for my sin. I'm sorry for my wrongdoing. Come and live in me. Come and have your life, Lord Father, in me. I want to live for you today and forevermore in the mighty name of Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen. Hallelujah. 
Let's just declare, let's just praise God. Let's press that like button as we give a virtual clap and a virtual shout for all those that have given their life to Jesus. Amen. Praise God. If you have any questions, if there's anything that's on your heart, then please just share some questions now and then we will read out a couple of questions if there are any questions then let's just declare now let's just let's uh, let's just ask those questions now and then I'll try and answer them but we're blessed Psalm 30 congratulations guys we've done 30 days 30 days of lockdown but we've done 30 days in the Word of God and we thank the Lord for it it's an incredible journey that we are on I was gonna say a journey that we have been on but we're still on the journey amen God hasn't finished with us yet God's only just starting with us right now and we want to see God increase what he's gonna do in us uh, tomorrow we're gonna to get into Psalm 31 and we're really gonna go forward in the things of God it's exciting what God is doing if there's any questions, then just put those questions down there. I'll wait a couple of moments. Great to see Regan and Joy. Saku. Jenny, Tracy, Sharon, Becky, Joy. Simon, good to see you, Simon. Amen. Isn't it great that God can replace depression with joy? God can replace sickness with health. You know, if it wasn't for the Holy Spirit, I mean, we were lost. We were lost. Amen. But now we're found. We once was blind, but now we see. I think it's wonderful. Don't forget, guys, that we do have um, an app. And I think I can put that. It's the Rock Church dot app i'll write it down in in the comment box now and all you need to do is just con uh, click onto that www dot the rock church dot app have i done that right and that would take you to an app i've just put it down there and if you click on that you'll be able to download the app and uh, it, the app's brand new and we're trying to rem you know, put as much information on there as possible um, but we want to be a blessing to you this is a, a unique time that we're in uh, and we have a unique uh, um, opportunity to gather together in the Word of God so it's exciting to see that and it's exciting to be here tonight am I f freezing up again Hallelujah. Well, I'm just going to leave this music playing just for a moment. I'll move out of the way of the screen. In fact, I'll just move across here. And then I'll just wait just for a few seconds in case there are any, um, if there are any questions. But as you can see behind, the psalm for your calm, Psalm 30. If you uh, were not calm tonight, then you can be calm because there's a psalm <laughs> there's a psalm for your calm okay um, and you can receive that right now Victor said that he's promised to turn our morning into dancing uh, we take what the enemy meant for evil and turn it for good Victor's put Betty and Gordon has put uh, what a mighty God we serve nothing is impossible with the glory to Jesus. So thank you, Anne. I said, have a peaceful sleep. Every day. <laughs> Do you remember this song? Every day it's you I live for. For those who have been safe for a little while. Let's just give God one last shout of praise. And let's just press that button there. And let's just declare that he's an incredible God. Amen. Well, guys, have an incredible night. Have a blessed night. Amen. And we shall tune in tomorrow. We shall do Psalm 31 tomorrow. And we shall go forward. 
in the things of God. Hallelujah. Well, I think it's that time for us to sing Waymaker, Miracle Worker. Continue to minister to one another. Continue to talk to one another. I'm so glad that you've joined us. Same time, same place tomorrow, 8 o'clock. Look forward to seeing you. Have an incredible night. And remember, Psalm 30, he is the peace in the storm. And he is your Waymaker, Miracle Worker, Promise Keeper, Light in the Darkness. Who is he? That's who he is. He's God. He's awesome. And he's got your back. He's got his hand on your life. And he's doing something incredible with us. Have a great night. See you tomorrow. 8 o'clock. Don't be late. I'll do my best not to be late. Tomorrow, 8 o'clock. Good night. And God bless you.